To activate panoramic rendering capabilities in Unreal Engine 5, you need to navigate to Edit, Plugins. Search for Pano. Enable Movie Render Queue Additional Render Passes. Click Yes to accept the beta and restarts your Unreal Engine when prompted. The second thing you need to do is turn off auto exposure on your post-process volumes and cameras. Auto exposure can cause your renders to turn black, so here's how to adjust it. For your post-process volumes, select the post-process volume in the outliner, go down to Lens, Exposure, turn your metering mode to Manual, and then adjust your exposure compensation so it matches something that will fit your scene. For my case, it's negative two. You also need to adjust your auto exposure for cameras. We do not have any cameras in the scene yet, so let's start by going to our Place Actors Cinematic, a cinematic camera actor, and drag it into the scene. With our camera in the scene, we're going to want to make sure that we have no rotation on the camera. If you already have a camera, it is okay if you have rotation in the Z axis, but you do not want any rotation in your X or Y axis. For the location of the camera, so far, it, when we place it in the scene, we could see it's placed at 20 centimeters. We recommend placing your camera at 140 centimeters, and that would be above the ground. So if this camera is already at 20 centimeters, we're going to add 140 to bring it to 160 centimeters. The last thing that we need to do is turn off the auto exposure for our cameras. To do that, we're going to go down to post process, lens, exposure. We're going to turn on metering mode and turn on it and turn it to manual. We can adjust our exposure compensation as needed. I like to render multiple panos. And so I'm going to select on my camera and I'm going to control C, control V, and I'm going to place it around my scene. The next thing that we need to do is set up our sequencer. To do that, I'm going to go to the Sequencer button and Add Level Sequence. And I'm just going to give this a default name and click Save. Now in the Sequencer, I'm going to select on my four cameras that I created and click and drag them in. On my main camera cuts, I'm going to take the film here and delete. Then under Camera Cuts, I'm going to hit the Plus button. And I'm going to select on the first camera. I'm going to right click, Properties, Start Range 0, End Range 1. I need to adjust my timeline. I'm going to do that at the bottom and end at frame 5. Start at frame 0. I'm going to move to frame 1, click the plus button, and add camera actor 2. I'm going to right click, properties, end range, 2. Move to the next frame, plus button, select the next camera, right click, properties, end range, 3. Next frame, plus button, next camera, right click, properties, end range, four. What we are doing here is setting up the frame in our sequence for every single camera. That way we can batch render all of our 360s at once. So now that our cameras have been placed in the sequencer, the next step is to add them to the movie render queue. To do that, we are gonna click on this button here. Now there are a few settings that you need to enable on the movie render queue. So in our settings, I'm going to click on Unsaved Config. Under Deferred Rendering, I'm going to delete that. Setting, Panoramic Rendering. Under Panoramic Rendering, I'm going to go to Advanced, and I'm going to make sure I have Allocate History Per Pane turned on. Now under my Output Settings, I can give this a resolution. The resolution should be a power of 2, and the width should be double the height. So. It should end in a power of two, meaning the resolution itself should be divisible by two. That would be 2048, 4096, 8192. And then the aspect ratio needs to be two by one. So the width is always double the height. I like to change the name of it to be open bracket camera name. So then our outputted files are named as our cameras are named. You can select a save location, select anywhere that you like. And that is it. I'm going to click Accept. And now when we render this job, I'm going to render all four of these cameras. I'm going to do that now. Okay, the renders have been completed. Let's open up 
the output directory and take a look. Here they are. I have all four and the exposure looks great. So the last thing I'm going to do is show you how to upload these to digitalspaces.io. To do that, I'm going to open up digitalspaces.io in a tab. I'm going to log in. I'm going to create a digital space. And I'm going to call this the UE5 demo. So when we create a project, we have to do two things. We upload the images, the panos, and then we upload the model. So the first thing that I'm going to do is upload those images. So I'm just going to take the four that we rendered and drag them in. And then the second thing we need to do is import the model. So for that, we need to export the model. So back to my Unreal Engine scene, I'm just going to do a file, export all. I'm just going to save this to my desktop and I'll call it UE5 demo. I'm going to save it as a FBX 2020. We do not need level of details. We do not need collision. Export. And that was very fast. So now back on digital spaces, I can upload model. On my desktop, I am going to find my UE5 demo, FBX. Upload that. So the first thing that we do is search for the cameras. And it looks like we have found all four cameras here. So I'm going to hit continue. And here we process the model. And while we wait for this, I can now, on my images, I can select what camera they go to. Oh, the model's been complete. I can select what camera goes to the image. So camera actor goes to camera actor. Camera actor two goes to camera actor two. And this is why in Unreal Engine, I set my output images to be set to the camera name. So then here, I can just connect these, a camera to the camera name image. And now if I go to the view tab, our experience should have been automatically created in 3D. Oh, it actually looks like there's a slight misalignment. So under alignment, rotate image, I'm just gonna rotate this. Looks like three times did it, save. Here we are. So now our panos, have been processed along with our 3D model. So now we can walk around in 3D in an interactive experience. And it was that quick to bring it to digital spaces. So now I can just publish this project and share it with the world. To do that, I'll just go back to project. Okay, back in my project, the last thing I could do is just hit the publish button. And after a few seconds, it will be published. And I could copy the link here, or I could open up in a new tab. And there we are. Now we can walk around our scene after rendering these 360s just in a few minutes by uploading to digitalspaces.io. So that completes the tutorial on how to render 360 images in the Unreal Engine 5. If you have any additional questions, leave a comment and I'll be sure to respond to that. Have a good day.